Hi, I'm Desiree, and I'm a 99-year-old artist. <laughs> left corner up there. Um, this is my fourth grade class with me Missy because I had left and I came down to the United States and I got my citizenship and this is when the judge de declared we're now citizens. It's my whole life story. It's so beautiful. When you create art, how does it make you feel? Well, I tell you right now, I'm so involved with ceramics. I can start something and three hours later I look up and I say, oh, where did the time go? <laughs> <laughs> Desiree was born and raised in a Jewish family in Zagreb, Yugoslavia. Today, you'd know it as the capital city of Croatia. She told me that growing up, she had a perfect childhood full of happiness, but that all changed in April 1941, when she was 19. Well, the uh, Germans um, invaded Croatia. And then one morning, we <coughs> I woke up to the sound of bombs. And uh, that was the end of my life as I knew it. And we had to flee, and I spent the next four years in displaced person camps. Uh, I went to Italy for two years, two, two different camps, and then we walked through the Alps into Switzerland. We got into Switzerland, and they didn't want us, they were going to send us back. So we sat in the forest, in the snow, it was in the middle of winter, all night. And in the morning they decided, okay, you can come in. And from then on, they separated my husband and myself into different camps. Was it a concentration camp? No, it was a displaced person camp. What does that mean? That means they weren't going to kill you, but they did everything else to you. Food was very scarce and we had to do work. In those days they were still mending socks and we had to mend socks for the men's camp. In the next one I lucked out because I was artistically inclined and I loved it. Um, we, I, we had to weave carpets out of rags. So you've always been an artist since you were young? I started when I was a child. But by the time I was 14 in high school and all that, I got too busy, I couldn't continue. Mm -hmm. But then after the war, after I came to the United States, got remarried, raised a family, and my youngest son was in high school, was a senior in high school. I thought, well, I really ought to try to see if I'm still interested. And that changed my whole life. Wow. Um, I was so interested that I ended up going to college at, at age 52. Really? As a Cal State Fullerton, I was the first woman to come back to school at that age. At 52 you went to college? Yes. What was that like? <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> I was surrounded by all the young people and, you know, <laughs> I was a grandma, and um, I just took art classes and enjoyed life. And then one day, uh, I got a letter from the office and said, "Hey, you can't do this. You have to take some serious classes too." <laughs> <laughs> so in her late fifties, Desiree graduated from college, got her master's in art, and went on to pursue her creative passions. So, what, what kind of art do you like to make? Well. Right now, I'm doing ceramics, and I've done that for probably the last 20 years. And that's what I'm doing now. That's how I'm embellishing my surroundings. How many hours a day would you say you spend creating art? Sometimes I can't work for two, three days, and sometimes I would work all day. But I try to do something every day. But, you know, I'm involved in a lot of different things as well. I'm very, very much involved in the game of Scrabble. Are you familiar? Yeah! I 
Are you a scrub up there? Yeah, uh, yes. I feel like I feel like you would beat us by a long shot. <laughs> yes, I, I play in clubs and tournaments. And that is a fun thing now because now we have a virtual club. I don't know if they told you that I just had my 99th birthday about two weeks ago. Yes. Happy you birthday. Happy birthday. And what happened is I, my son lives up in Washington, my oldest son, in Washington State. He got a Zoom party for me. And he invited every living relative in the world that I still have. And I mean in the world because two couples were in Australia, two couples were in the UK, and the, and the rest of them were all over the United States. 37 people were in that Zoom party. Oh my God. And it was incredible. How old are your kids? Uh, old enough to live here. <laughs> 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 One day my daughter came and said, you know guys, do you realize we're all old enough to live here? <laughs> What is your secret to a long, healthy life? I am that time to stop to get old. <laughs> My daughter one time told me, you're never going to die because God isn't going to be able to find you. <laughs> <laughs> and these are the favorite people in my whole world. My mother's parents, they were killed in a concentration camp. Talk about the process of making that Ceramic. And I use my fingers. I use two little tools. One is a knife and one is something I can dig things up. And when you finish the piece, do you feel accomplished? Do you feel happy? I feel happy. <laughs> That's why I do it. How many pieces of art have you created, whether it's a ceramic or a painting or a anything? I have no idea. <laughs> like thousands? Well, well into the hundreds for sure. Because every time I had a show, I had to have like 20 or 30 pieces in many years each year. Do you ever plan to quit art? I have arthritis really bad. And some days I can't even work. But that this work is healing. Aside from art, what makes you happy in life? My family. What else? I think I make myself happy because I'm a very positive person. And it seems like you never get bored. I don't know what the word means. <laughs> I have never in my life been bored, not even in camps. I've always found something to do. In one camp, I started an English class for children of the potential immigrants or future immigrants. Always find something. I am so grateful that I was able to meet Desiree and tell her inspiring story. She is living proof that it's never too late to follow your dreams. In all of my travels, I can't recall anyone I've met who is as joyful as Desiree, and she's just about to turn a hundred. May she be blessed with many more happy and healthy years to come. So Desiree, what is one message that you would like to say to the world? Life gives you a lemon, make lemonade. If you don't mind me asking, I want to know a little bit more about World War II. Are you, are you comfortable talking about it? Yeah. So were you under the control of the Nazis or not? Or? No, I never got there. You never got there? I was out of there. How do you think, how do you think you got away? Like. I don't know and I've never figured out what made me do this or be that way. <clears throat> I, I was only 19, like I told you, and I had never any problems, any, anything to worry about in my whole life. And yet I knew that I had to get out of there. And I told my, the rest of the family, including my brand new husband, I'm out of here. And he said, no, 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 they all stayed. I got my husband to go eventually. And I tell you the way I managed to get out. <clears throat> we did it early. We fled to my um, mother-in-law's place, which was Sarajevo. 
and coming in on the train, I saw coffins standing up on end in the, gra in the graveyard. And I said, this is not a place where I want to stay. And everybody else wanted to stay there, thought nothing was going to, including my father. He said, nothing's going to happen. They're all my friends. These guys are going to protect me. Well, he was the first one that was killed. Your father? Yeah. In a concentration camp? Yeah, in a real concentration camp. So a lot of your fr friends and family didn't make it out? Nobody. Nobody? You're the only one? Well, my husband was too timid and too afraid to go with me. We had to get a uh, permit from the Nazis to get on the train and get out of there because it was still early you could do that. They bombed us on Easter Sunday at 5 o'clock in the morning oh on April 6th. And by the end of April, I was out of there. I, I went by myself to the German headquarters. I sat in a room with a room full of Gestapo and me a little, not yet 20-year-old, <laughs> sitting, sitting there with the steel helmets and, and interrogating me for about an hour, trying to get me to admit that I was Jewish. And I never did. And if you did, what would happen? I'd go the other way. <laughs> How did you convince them? Well, I, was, I had all kinds of advantages. For one thing, I spoke perfect German because almost everybody in Europe is bilingual. And my grandmother and grandfather spoke German, so we had to speak German. I'm Drew Binsky, and if you like my travel videos, please click subscribe and join me as I plan to visit every country in the world.